All right. I hope everyone is still enjoying their food and enjoying their fellowship. And I wish you would all join me in thanking our performers again for their wonderful show. I'd like to welcome those joining us online. We are glad to be able to have you with the 2023 Leo W. Jenkins Society event as we begin our program. Anyone who knows me or who works with me knows I'm always consuming information for motivation as well as trying to maximize achievement. My staff probably wishes I did less of this and did it less often because I share a lot of it with them. <clears throat> Over the last couple of weeks in my readings, I came across a story about a father who came home from work to find his kids, a brother and a sister, in a heated dispute. No one's ever had that happen at their house, have they? They were hurling very short words at one another, like many si siblings do on various occasions. As you might imagine, this immediately really bothered the father, as he did not want this argument to have a lasting impact. As a response, he immediately put his hands on each of their shoulders to calm the situation and to get their attention, then said, listen carefully. This is a special place we are in, and it's called home. In this place, we build each other up and support one another. Outside these walls, things are very different with constant competition, disagreement, judgment, and tearing down of people's ideals. When I heard that story, perhaps based on my pre-existing condition referenced above, I immediately thought of East Carolina University, our home. And I thought about us not being an institution of exclusivity that separates based on differences, but one of social mobility collectively taking our students from where they arrive to a much different place when they graduate. This measurable growth shows up in a several rankings where we rate highly as a significant change agent and producer of top level graduates. What is taught here opens a world of possibilities that they never knew were available. So perhaps it is the fact that I'm from Elizabeth City, had a dad who received 20 years of extra life based on care from a special Brody School of Medicine doctor, have a degree from here, have two children enrolled currently, or the fact I get to witness the amazing things students achieve on this campus every day. But I believe, I think you do as well, based on your visionary support, that we at ECU build things. It is in our very institutional fabric, and it's that special intangible that changes the lives of our students, and most often their entire families and communities. This in many ways is counter to the narrative about higher education nationally in the media. Those talking points look at continued rising costs and limitations of the traditional educational format. Fortunately, our formula for success offsets all those questions and in many ways positions us for strength in the future amid a challenging landscape. ECU finds itself at an interesting crossroads on this January 1st. It is the end of our Pursue Goal campaign, yet the beginning of our ECU strategic plan and entitled Future Focused, Innovation Driven. We will celebrate the many philanthropic accomplishments the camp in the campaign while quickly focusing on increased student scholarships, research, experiential learning, providing credentialing professional opportunities, and the utilization of technology for educational and medical delivery. During the Pursue Gold campaign, charitable gift planning donors like yourselves contributed over $172 million in future gifts through 306 total donors. Scholarships represent 45% of that total with another 23% designated to discretionary program or faculty support. So as we look back on our recent success and look forward to the critical work we feel compelled to do, our, our entire staff says thank you. Your passion and commitment fuel our belief in the job we do every day. Referring back to the story above, you build things for the better. Your gifts not only make the impact, 
the, of the wonderful projects and funds you support all across ECU, but also have a compounding effect that encourages others to give and believe in the future. Please know we are honored and grateful that your investments and that your investments matter here and change lives by the legacy you are leaving, and we say thank you. Today, before we induct our new members, we are pleased to hear from two guest speakers, ECU alumni and current first year Brody Scholar, Abby Olfers, as well as ECU alumnus Keith Beatty. Abby graduated in the spring of this year with a bachelor's degree in public health from the College of Health and Human Performance. As a Brinkley Lane Scholar, her time in the Honors College included a wealth of opportunities for co-curricular activities and research. It was this passion for research that has led her to continue her studies at ECU as a first year Brody Scholar in the Brody School of Medicine. Abby is a remarkable young alumna who embodies the spirit of excellence and continuous pursuit of knowledge at ECU. Please join me in welcoming Abby as she shares her unique perspective on the intersection of our institution's legacy and the promising future that lies ahead. All right, guys. Here we go. Thank you for those kind words. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Abby Olvers, and as you heard, I was a 2023 graduate from the College of Health and Human Performance with a bachelor's in public health, and I'm a current first-year medical student and Brody Scholar at the Brody School of Medicine. As many of you may know, ECU has recently established an, uh, an updated strategic plan for the years 2023 to 2028 future-focused, innovation-driven. ECU's commitment to our mission of student success, public service, and regional transformation has not wavered, and in fact, has only gotten stronger. This plan highlights the intersection of ECU's mission with a set of vision priorities, social and economic mobility, workforce success, and rural health and well-being. When I think of ECU's mission and vision, I see myself in my journey. I've loved getting to know some of your stories today, so I'd like to share a little bit of mine. I am a product of Eastern North Carolina, born here in Greenville. I attended Pitt County Schools, graduating from D.H. Conley High School. I played softball with the Pitt County Girls Softball League, sang in the Greenville Choral Society, and was a member, ambassador, and volunteer with the Health Sciences Academy. Needless to say, my Greenville and Eastern North Carolina roots run deep. During my senior year of high school, I applied and was accepted to the Honors College and was invited to Selection Sunday to interview for the EC Scholars Program, now known as the Brinkley Lane Scholars Program. Selection Sunday was when I recognized that I was being called to attend ECU. Looking back, the decision to become a pirate was a huge turning point in my life. During my undergraduate years at ECU, I made lifelong friendships, served in leadership roles, conducted research, studied abroad, and truly had the best college experience. Some of you may have read a story released graduation week this past May about my three college roommates and best friends. We were all members of the Honors College and three of us were Brinkley Lane Scholars. Post-grad, we're all pursuing our goals. I'm a medical student, Ren is in dental school at UNC, Kaylee is working for SAS, and Teresa is a nurse at Novant Health in Charlotte. Being surrounded by hardworking and passionate women who encouraged me, held me accountable, and celebrated my accomplishments was a highlight of my college experience. To me, we are examples of the type of student and success that can only be found at East Carolina. One of the main reasons I chose to attend ECU was the broad spectrum of academic opportunities I would have to explore. As a member of the Honors College, I conducted research for my signature honors project alongside Dr. Biba Das during my senior year. This project focused on OB-GYN provider physical activity levels and their likelihood to prescribe physical activity to their maternal patients. I hope to continue this project by developing an educational program for medical students and residents during my time at Brody. This is just one way that I hope to contribute to the transformation of this region and our state. 
My future is where I can see ECU's mission and vision truly come to life. There's so much need in Eastern North Carolina and so much room for innovation and creativity to drive positive change. For me, attending ECU means knowing I will be prepared with the knowledge and relevant experience necessary to address health needs of our communities by providing access to medical care, medical education, and circumstantial empathy. Outside of wonderful friendships, research opportunities, and public service, ECU has continually supported me as a student, individual, and now future physician. As a Brinkley Lane Scholar and current Brody Scholar, donor support has had a major impact on the course of my education and professional goals. Donation, scholarship, investment. The investment of our university donors and the futures of our students allows students to invest in themselves into service-oriented education and goal-driven ambition. What makes ECU donors stand apart is their desire to build relationships with students, support for student success, and long-term focus on university growth and development. As I grow into a Pirate alumna, I hope to continue the kindness, generosity, and legacy of donor support that you all have established in supporting future Pirate students in the decades to come. Thank you all for your continued support of ECU and students like me. Your investment in the future direction of our university gives me hope and excitement for the wonderful things to come. Hopefully that will stop the crackle that we've heard. But, uh, you know, please, can you join me in giving me, um, Abby, another round of applause? She was fantastic. We were just talking at the table, and I think about where I was at her age and the difference in maturity level and uh, the things she's planning, and it just speaks volumes to the caliber students and the caliber person she is, so thank you. Each time I have the opportunity to hear from our outstanding students and young alumni, I'm filled with pride and awe at the things they've accomplished here at ECU. This year, in addition to having Abby, we are thrilled to have with us today another proud member of Pirate Nation. Raised in Charlotte, North Carolina, Keith graduated from East Carolina University with a BS in education. Keith has been a resident of Wilmington since the 1980s and began his career as a self-employed business owner before joining Intercoastal Realty in 1993. For 20 consecutive years, Keith has, Intercoastal, has been Intercoastal Realty's top agent for homes sold and is ranked as the area's top selling team for nine consecutive years. His team has sold over $2 billion in residential real estate. Keith has continued his connection with ECU through involvement and philanthropic support of the Access Scholars Program, the College of Health and Human Performance, and ECU athletics. When not working, he enjoys ECU sports and spending time fishing in the Bahamas, where he has a small residence for 20 years. As an alumnus who has translated the lessons learned at ECU into a flourishing career, he stands as a beacon for what our university represents, a commitment to excellence, a passion for community, and a drive to make a positive impact in the world. Please help me welcome Keith to the podium. Hello, everyone. It's great to be here. It's an honor to be here. Um, it is uh, especially great to, to sit with the Jenkins family, who I've known, Edie and Jeff, and, and the rest of them for many, many years since I was in my early early 20s. So it's uh, it's just awesome to, to do this. So um, they asked me a little bit about just to kind of tell my story, to tell uh, um, a little bit about, you know, how I got here and, and why I donate to the university that, that we all love so much. So that's what we'll do. Um, as as Greg said, I grew up in Charlotte, but I, before I got to Charlotte in the seventh grade, 
we moved around a lot. I was an only child. Uh, we moved from Maryland to New Jersey to Hawaii. Today is a special day in Hawaii, as we know, September the 7th. And then Fort Lauderdale, Florida, then showed up in Charlotte when I was in sixth grade, right after sixth grade. <clears throat> My father was from Mount Holly in Gaston County. So we settled on the west side of Charlotte off Wilkinson Boulevard. I don't know if any of you have been to Wilkinson Boulevard and the river, but it's uh, what they call the tough west side. So that's where we, that's where we grew up. There you go. Another West Sider. That's right. That's good. So, uh, but it was great there and, and, and I sort of flourished there. Uh, I was a good high school football player and I got recruited by some, some smaller schools, but ECU offered me a, uh, a roster spot on what was then freshman team. They didn't have, uh, the freshmen couldn't be on the varsity in, in, the, in the early 70s. I don't even know when it changed. But anyway, so that's, that's in a way how I got here. Um, had a wonderful, wonderful experience here academically and, and uh, just growing up, if you will. Um, being an only child, it was, you know, I, I didn't, didn't have the interact, interaction as maybe some, some families do. But anyway, it was, it was great. And, and when I got here, I, I met many, many lifelong friends, many people who became my mentors. Uh, Bobby Rippey, some of you may know, uh, Bubba Rawl still great friends of mine today and, and mentors. I was a school teacher and became a businessman. And they had a you know big influence on that, as many other people did. Dr. Grimsley, who was my faculty advisor here, was a big influence on me. Uh, Dr. Grimsley, I think, passed away a few years ago, but he was a big, big influence for me. Um, <clears throat> you know, I'm in Wilmington. There's probably 4,000 alumni in the Wilmington area. Uh, and, and well, obviously I don't know all 4,000 of them, but I have a somewhat of a name recognition there. So all the time people come up to me and said, Keith, I was at uh, parent orientation. My, my son or daughter is going to ECU. And what a place that is. I had no idea that, that the university offered the things that it does. And, you know, that makes you proud to have come here. Many times they come up and says, my son and daughter just graduated there. What an experience, what an education they got. And uh, so that really, you know, those things over and over, you know, make an impact on you. Um, <clears throat> the College of uh, um, Construction Management. I deal with a lot of builders and developers and ine inevitably somebody on their team or in their company went to ECU and is construction management. And it's a wonderful program that has employed a lot of people. And there's many, many other great, uh, great schools here. But that one just happens to be in, in what I do. So, so that's, that's been often. And, and then just, you know, over, over time, I realized that probably one of the most important things that ever happened to me was coming here. You know, and everything, and people I met and, and the things that I learned was, you know, was, was just awesome. So, so about, you know, I've been a member of the Pirate Club for maybe 40 years, so at different levels, of course. And, and then about seven years ago, uh, Melissa Adamson came to, was in town, and she came by and knocked on my, called me and said, can I take you to lunch? And I said, well, sure, sure. And, and so from that meeting seven years ago, we set up a modest uh, a scholarship to the Health and Human Performance School, which is where I graduated from. And so we did a, a small uh, scholarship that lasted about five years. Um, then two years ago, we decided we would do an access scholarship, a much, you know, a much more, a bigger scholarship, if you will. And uh, so we did that, and that's in my second year. And I did something that that nobody had done, I don't think, according to Melissa, um, is I, I made that scholarship go to a student in my high school in Charlotte. Okay, because that was, we weren't the Myers Parks or the South Mecklenburgs or the East Mecklenburgs. We were from the tough west side. And so anyway, that, that's what I decided to do. And unfortunately, last year, nobody, nobody signed up for it. Uh, we're going to give it one more year. And uh, if that doesn't happen, then I'll, we'll open it up to southeastern North Carolina, the, the counties that I, you know, hang out in, if you will. So, you know, so we're excited about that. And then, then. Then this year, um, 
my financial advisor and one of the lawyers, we set up a trust and, and, and I didn't know, you know, they said, well, you can do this Keith with, you know, with your, your retirement money, you know, which is built over up over a long time. Cause you can, you know, then you can then put that in an endowment. And when you, you pass on, then all that money will go to the foundation and the pirate club tax free. So that was, you know, that was great. That was eye opening. And, and that's what we did. So, so we've done the endowment now. And uh, uh, so anyway, just, it was a process, if you will, to, to over a number of years to, to try and get back uh, to the place that we all love. So that's my story. You know, I want to thank Melissa and, and Jessica Nottingham for being so great to me for coming, coming down and, and help setting this stuff up. And, and it's an honor to be here and, Go Pirates, Art. Wow. Good afternoon. I have the particular challenge of not only following two really great speakers, thank you, Keith and Abby, for your comments, uh, but also, I bring greetings on behalf of Chancellor Rogers. Um, Chancellor Rogers was unable to join us today. He uh, very much appreciates and, and loves uh, being a part of this event every year, but he was called away to the UNC system office and to meet with some of the Board of Governor members. But he sends his sincerest uh, regrets for not being able to be here. And again, it's one of his favorite events each and every year. He asked that I share a few of his comments on on his behalf, um, as we celebrate and honor the Leo Jenkins Society members who so generously support East Carolina University. Leo Jenkins, as already mentioned by Greg, was a transformational leader and his legacy at ECU endures. He ins instilled a deep sense of pride in being an ECU pirate throughout the campus, the local community, across the region and state. Our institution owes a great deal to Chancellor Jenkins and his family, and what better way to honor somebody who's given so much to our beloved university than to celebrate the commitment demonstrated by members of a group of folks who bear his name. East Carolina University has stood as a beacon for Eastern North Carolina for more than 115 years, a truly special place made up of outstanding people committed and dedicated to the bedrock of our mission, student success, public service, and regional transformation. ECU is recognized in a variety of rankings among the best colleges and universities, top public schools, best schools for veterans, to just name a few. The Miller School of Entrepreneurship, which houses the Isley Innovation Center, is the hub, is the only, excuse me, the only endowed school of entrepreneurship in the state of North Carolina, and it is recognized among the top 50 undergraduate schools for entrepreneurship nationwide. We are, have a number, we are number one in North Carolina and top 10 nationally for online learning, top 20 for social mobility, top 15 for community and national service, top 15 for best bang for your buck in the Southeast, and the accolades go on and on. In a recent ROI study that was conducted by the UN University of North Carolina system, 98% of ECU programs have a positive ROI for our students. 90% of our graduates are employed in advancing their education within six months of graduating. And in the most recent US News College, best college rankings, we increased nearly 40 spots in our national rankings. These impressive recognitions and accomplishments would not be possible without the support and generosity of the many fine pirates here today and across Pirate Nation. There are, there are reasons to be proud, but there is also uh, serve as great motivation for continuing to deliver on our promise to learners and to our region and state. Our work is ongoing and I'm grateful for the, that we're in this journey together. A lot has been accomplished over the past three years and momentum continues to grow. The recent state budget contains several very important measures that were uh, instrumental to re ECU. ECU Health is in its operational phase and great work is well underway. There, new purple logos can be seen on buildings and billboards throughout the region, symbolizing ECU's commitment to service. It was a historical year in philanthropic giving. 
along the, with those historical accomplishments, we're also in the research space, just to give a few examples of all that's been happening. And of course, we will continue to build on this momentum across Pirate Nation. I look forward to seeing what's for East, East Carolina. Each of these events are vital for our continued growth and success. As articulated and as already mentioned a couple of times today in our refreshed strategic plan that was launched this fall, we maintain a steadfast dedication to being future focused and innovation driven. Our core commitments remain evergreen as we turn our focus to the ECU of tomorrow. As a university, we have many aspirations to provide access to educational experiences that are responsive to the needs of today's learners, to increase completion rates, to close achievement gaps, to produce more workers in high demand fields, just to name a few. Driving our work towards aspirational goals is an unwavering commitment to our three vision priorities already articulated today, but it's always good to re reiterate. Social and economic mobility, workforce success, and rural health and quality of life. We are excited about the opportunity to emphasize creative, innovative work that will work to continue to drive our efforts as we move into the future. These lofty goals can only be met by focused efforts in a collaborative spirit and the support of great pirates, such as all of you in this room. The strong endowment is critically important as we seek to deliver on the goals of being future focused and committed to making a difference in the world around us. Our comprehensive campaign, Pursue Gold, which is the largest in our university's history, has been the bedrock of this campaign, has been about creating golden opportunities, championing research, sustaining our value and building our future. They remain central as we invest in the future. It has been a historical year for ECU through your support and others and philanthropic giving in this space. We had a record $95 million in commitment in philanthropic giving last year. The largest single gift in university's history, 35 million combined was a combined commitment of Robert and Amy Brinkley and Lynn and Pat, uh, <laughs> Pat Lane, Lewis Patrick Lane. They combined gave uh, the combination for Honors College and turned ECU's EC scholars into the Brinkley Lane scholars. Over in Pirate Club, we had the largest gift ever there with a $5 million investment from Van and Jennifer Isley. These are two of the many examples of deep, incredible investments in generosity in Pirate Nation. I'm proud to report that as we look at the final days and weeks of this campaign, we have met our goal of over $500 million in support. I pulled up the number before coming over. We're over $514 million to date. But it will not surprise you to say that we are not done. Of course, we will continue to raise dollars in this campaign and beyond, and we'll have a special concentration in additional, for additional scholarships, for, scholar, for scholarships for our, our learners. We are driven by innovation as we focus on the future, as evidenced by the historical accomplishments in the research space. This past year, ECU achieved yet another record, a single record of $85.5 million across 438 sponsored programs that represents nearly a 450% increase in our research since fiscal year 20. These awards not only fund research, but they also fund education, community programs, equipment, infrastructure to support a wide variety of initiatives and activities. We have many talented faculty and staff working to create new knowledge, solving complex challenges, improve our, to improve our state and our region. The investments indicate the trust placed in our university to deliver upon our mission. So in closing, please know how much we are all grateful for the investments that you make and your steadfast dedication and commitment to ECU and its future. Your generosity allows us to continue to deliver on our mission of student success, public service, and regional transformation. Thank you for all that you do and go Pirates. So I began my comments by saying that uh, this is one of the chancellor's favorite uh, events every year. So we've recorded this and I know that he will watch it later. So I'm gonna look at the camera and say, Dr. Rogers, I hope I delivered upon your message and did it well. So um, this is the part, if you're following along in your program, this is, the, 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 this is what really matters. It's about recognizing you and inducting our newest members into the society. 
Um, it's what it's about. And we, we always like to celebrate these newest uh, members. So your legacy and generosity continues to sustain the value in East Carolina University for generations of pirates to come. And for that, we will forever be grateful. The 2023 Gen Jenkins Society inductees are leaders on and off the campus. They serve on boards and councils, given of their time and talent, and have provided treasures through their commitments, their bequests, estate plans, and a variety to support a variety of priorities across campus from scholarships, both in the academics and in the athletics, to programs and to research. Today, we're fortunate to have nine inductees, both individuals and couples in attendance today. As your name is called out, we ask that you come forward and to receive the medallion and take a photo with Greg. Take a sip of water, I've talked about. We're going to begin with a recognizable name and face, but Mr. Keith Beatty, Beatty, excuse me, whom we just heard from, is an alum of class of 1973 with a BS in Health and Human Performances and Physical Education. Keith is the owner and broker of Intercoastal Realty Company. His bequest will support the Keith Beatty Access Scholarship Endowment Fund and the Pirate Club. Dr. William Bogey, Jr. and Ms. Jenny Sue Pulzinski. I think Jenny's, Jenny K could be here with us today. But Dr. Bogey is an ECU alum earning a bachelor's in science and chemistry in 1980 and a doctorate of medicine in 1984. Dr. Bogey is a professor in the Department of Cardiovascular Sciences and our Brody School of Medicine. Jenny Sue, or Jenny K, as many of us know her, is a 1985 graduate bachelor's in fine arts education as a local jewelry maker and successful business owner. Their gifts to establish the Bogey family, Jenny and Bill Access Scholarship Endowment. Retired, retired Colonel James Worth Carter and Mrs. Dolores H. Carter. Mm -hmm. Colonel Carter is a retired colonel in the Air Force and present, uh, presently is the deputy man program manager with the Missile Defense Agency. He's a dual degree holder from ECU, earning a BS in business administration in 1977 and a master's in business administration in 1981. He and his wife, Dolores, are proud parents as well. Their gifts support the College of Health and Human Performance through the Colonel J. Worth Carter Jr. Distinguished Military Service Society Scholarship Endowment Fund for the Aero Air Force ROTC and the College of Business through the Dolores and Worth Carter Service Endowment. <clears throat> Larry Jean Cox. Larry Cox. Mr. Cox is an ECU alum, class of 1982, with a BS in business administration and marketing. He's a loan compliance te technician with the State Employees Credit Union. His bequest will establish the Larry E. Cox Business Scholarship Endowment Fund. Mr. Gary Lee Dudley and Mrs. Monica Rivas Dudley. Mr. Dudley is a senior territory business manager for Biogem and is a 1992 alum with a BS in business administration with a concentration in marketing. Gary is a passionate pirate and joined the Alumni Association Board of Directors in 2004. Monica is a dual degree holder from ECU with a BS and MS in speech language pathology. Through their request, they will support the ECU Alumni Association Scholarship Beth Page Lanier. Ms. Lanier, class of 1991, holds a BS in business administration and has worked in the IT security field for more than 30 years. Beth Page Lanier Access Scholarship Endowment will be established through Beth's estate. If not for the scholarships, Beth could not have afforded to attend college. It is her wish to pay this generosity forward so that others can receive the life altering experiences of being a graduate of East Carolina University. Retired Captain James B. Newman, Jr. and Mrs. Judy Newman. Mr. Newman is a retired alum, class of 1968 and 1974 with a BA in psychology and an MBA. 
James is a student athlete playing football and running track for ECU during his time here. Judy is an alum herself and has a degree in education. The couple met at ECU and have been married for over 50 years. Deborah Guest provides support through the James and Judith Newman Access Scholarship for Education, the James and Judith Newman Access Scholarship for Business, and the support of the Buyer Club. Mr. Carl Elliott Swanson and Mrs. Janet Grace Swanson. Mr. Swanson is a retired ECU Maritime Prof Studies Professor and Program Director. His wife Janet is a 1989 Master's of Arts in Education graduate from ECU and a retired Beaufort County School Educator. Their gift to, will establish the Carl E. and Janet G. Swanson Scholarship Endowment Fund for students studying in the Maritime Studies Program. Mr. Jo Joseph Lee Wood and Carolyn Staten Wood. Mr. and Mrs. Wood are proud EC alums. Joe is class of 1977 and 79 with a BS in accounting and an MBA. And Carolyn is class of 1979 with an MBA in concentration in accounting. Like so many other pirate households, they met at ECU. Their estate gifts will establish the Joseph L. and Carolyn S. Wood MBA Scholarship Endowment. So while we're clapping, let's let's give everybody a round of applause for the introduction. I'd also like to take just another moment and recognize the 2023 inductees who were not able to join us today. You've seen their names and designated support on the screens throughout our lunch today, but I want to take just a moment to call their names. Dr. Emily L. Bray and Mr. Paul T. Bray, Mrs. K. B. Curtis, Ms. Robin Kristen Graves, Mr. Stephen Marshall Grice, Mr. Randy Carlton Jones and Deborah Jones, Dr. Gerhard Kamlis, Mr. Michael John Langer, Dr. Joseph G. L. Lee, Mr. John Everett Oliver Jr. and Mrs. Cheryl Oliver, Mr. Freddie Mayo Powell, Mr. Lawrence William Samir and Mrs. Teresa Tomasic Samir, Samir, Mrs. Stephanie Shane Wise Spivey, Mr. John Eric Strickland and Miss, Mrs. Billy Cashwell Strickland, Mr. Dwayne Posey. Teague, Mrs. Sandra Jarman Whaley, and finally, Jonathan Moore York. And finally, as I wrap up, I'd like to give just a bit of more recognition. There are current members of the Leo Jenkins Society who went back, revisited their plans, and have added to their, uh, to their support of, of ECU. Uh, Robert Gentry Brinkley, and Mrs. Amy Woods Brinkley, Mr. Lewis Patrick Lane, and Mrs. Lynn Lewis Lane, and finally, Mr. Hayes Pettiway. Most importantly, thank you all for being here today, and thank you for your continued support of ECU. Right? All right. Thank you, Diva, and thank you to our guest speakers, Ms. Abby Olfers and Mr. Keith Beatty. Thank you so much. As mentioned in your invitation, following the conclusion of the introduction ceremony, we are looking, we are offering a look into ECU's future as we dive into the new strategic plan, future-focused, innovation-driven. We are thrilled to have EC volleyball player Merritt Woodson with us to speak about her experience as a student athlete and the importance of facility enhancements, and Dr. Herb Garrison, Professor and Associate Dean for the Graduate 
up for graduate medical education to talk about the state of the art new medical education building breaking ground soon on our health sciences campus. We will have a brief break prior to the strategic plan overview. If you are staying for that, please be back in your seats around 10 minutes. Uh, you may have noticed the artwork displayed off to the side of the stage. Um, all guests in attendance today may take home a limited edition sign print by renowned artist B.J. Smith. Each of the four distinctive pieces features the same poignant quote from Leo Jenkins. We hope this small token of our appreciation brings added beauty to your home or office. Finally, finally thank you all to all of our Leo W. Jenkins Society members for your meaningful support and generosity. Your efforts encourage others to consider all aspects of giving. Your visionary benevolence and leadership change lives in our region, state, and ECU every day. Thanks for enabling us to always put first our mission of a national model for student success, public service, and regional transformation. We wish you and your entire family a safe, healthy, and blessed holiday season. Thank you again for coming, and we hope many will stay afterwards.